When you think of the Ivy League, what do you picture? The upper echelon of higher learning and human potential? An unparalleled arena for knowledge acquisition and networking? Maybe a social badge of honor that gets you laid? Bruh. But peel back all the gilded layers and fancy dressing, and what's left over? A simple business. That's it. This is the first unspoken truth of the Ivy League. In fact, the oldest corporation in the entire Western Hemisphere is literally Harvard. That's right, established in 1650, they literally called themselves the Harvard Corporation, or sometimes literally just the corporation. We often worship Harvard and the rest of the Ivy League with godlike reverence, praying they notice us enough to pluck us out of obscurity. We think of them as this altruistic force whose only mission is to spread knowledge and save puppies, utterly above the messy fray of human existence. But just like any random store down the street, they must grapple and come to terms with one practical and unglamorous truth. Money. The money. The money. The money. 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 Just like Walmart, the Harvard Corporation needs money. But that's what tuition is for, right? You pay them some money and Harvard gives you a degree. Simple. Yeah, that's probably true for your average university. But we're talking Ivy League here. Take Harvard's endowment, for example. It's about $50 billion, which rivals the economic output of entire countries. In 2023, this endowment generated a return of $1.3 billion from their investments alone, which was actually considered a low-performing year. You think they need your tuition? No. The Ivy League plays an entirely different ballgame. Imagine you're Harvard for a second. If you wanted to maximize your long-term profits, what would your business model look like? just auction off admission tickets to the highest bidder, right? I give you $1 million and all you have to do is put my name on one of your fancy buildings and maybe let my dumbass kids sit in one of your classes. That placard with my name on it costs what, a hundred bucks at most? Pretty good deal, right? Talk about return on investment. This is called donor admissions and is a common practice. For example, Lex Luthor, uh, I mean Les Wexner, billionaire owner of Victoria's Secret, was a graduate of Ohio State University. But for some strange reason I can't explain, donates $2 million a year to Harvard for 10 years straight, up until 2012. And then in 2013, suddenly ups his donation to $8.5 million. Bizarre, right? What in the world was happening in 2013? I mean, sure, 2013 just so happened to be the year his kid was accepted into Harvard. That's just a coincidence. Also, coincidentally, his second kid got in in 2014, his third kid got in in 2015, and his last kid got in in 2016. So yeah, he slipped in a few extra million during each of these years, but who's really counting, right? Honestly, don't you kind of feel bad for the 2015 kid? He's only worth about $7 million compared to the $26 million kid in 2014. But anyway, back to you. If you were running Harvard, maybe you'd also let a few of these rich kids slip by because, you know, who doesn't like money? But realistically, you can't fill your entire class this way. One, it looks frankly terrible. And two, you run the risk of graduating dumb rich kids that kill your brand in the long run. And in this game, your brand is everything. Take Nike, for example. You may think they sell shoes, but that's just skin deep. What they really sell is a concept, a lifestyle, an ethos of supreme athletic achievement. It's not the shoe you're paying money for, it's the feeling, the emotion, the subconscious thought that when you strap on your Air Jordans, you in fact become Michael Jordan. And so, the business model for Nike is pretty clear. Sponsor as many top powerhouse athletes as possible. Your brain, being the pattern recognition machine it is, sees these athletes crushing it, all while wearing that little Nike swoosh right on their foreheads. The not so subtle message is clear. Nike equals winning. It's the oldest trick in the marketing book. Nike borrows power from Michael Jordan, you borrow power from Nike. Dollar signs all the way up. At its core, Harvard's business model is literally the same. It may look like they are selling you a degree in education, some unrivaled access to a golden library of knowledge, but that's just the shoe again. What they are really selling is still an emotion, a feeling, and arguably even more damaging, a subconscious dependency. The messaging is this. If you want to be successful, you need our golden stamp of approval, and not just kind of need it, you desperately need it. Because without them, you'll be nothing. This is the core deception of the Ivy League and is the crux of the second unspoken truth. You really actually don't need the Ivy League. 
it's kind of like dating. The more desperate you appear, the more unattractive you become. But instead, live a rich life filled with substance and add a modicum of self-respect and empathy, and bam, suddenly you're surrounded with options. Like the old cliche goes, you, my friend, are beautiful already, just the way you are. Just like Nike, the power of the Ivy League resides in its brand. The more prestigious we perceive this brand to be, the more it is able to convert that prestige into cold, hard cash. For with prestige comes power, the power to recruit the best and brightest, students, professors, researchers, you name it, the movers and shakers of the world, and thus guarantee a near continuous infusion of golden prestige right back into the brand. This is the never-ending positive feedback loop that they want. It feeds the narrative that permeates our collective subconscious, that the Ivy League is basically synonymous with success itself. But something feels off about this, no? You see, this system relies on you doing most of the heavy lifting. All Harvard had to do is get good at picking the winners. It's not like they're tasked with transforming average Joes into the next big thing, because each Joe that comes in already looks like the next big thing. Thus, getting into the Ivy League is really just a simple transactional business relationship. If Harvard hands you a golden ticket of acceptance, they aren't just doing so out of the goodness of their hearts. They expect something in return. Money and donations are always nice. In fact, I get letters in the mail asking for donations all the time. But what they want above all is simply more prestige. If you want to get into the Ivy League, what you really need to show is your ability to maximize their ROP, Return on Prestige, the heart and soul of their entire business model. Harvard is kind of like a bank. They lend you a little bit of their prestige in the beginning when you are a nobody and hope you use this loan to then become a somebody. And when you finally do become a somebody, that's when they cash all that prestige back. Just like Nike borrows prestige from Jordan, Harvard borrows all their prestige from you. In other words, they expect greatness. They expect you to do shit with your life, to be someone. They are betting on you to make something happen in comparison to the tens of thousands of people they reject. Most of these people won't get in because their mindset is too egocentric. It's all about what Harvard can do for me, when in actuality, the real question they should ask is, what can I do for Harvard? The Ivy League, through some secretive and mysterious process, is basically measuring your ability to grow its brand. There's a secret smoke-filled room where people sit. They go through your file and they measure your potential, placing bets on people like they're racehorses at the Kentucky Derby. Are you really the next Michael Jordan? Or are you just some wannabe basketball player pretending? But the good news is, you don't literally have to be the next Michael Jordan. You don't need any championship rings. All you need are some basic signs saying you got potential. Signs like good grades, creative thinking, unique life experiences, and just as important, an ability to sell yourself. Crafting the perfect application essay and selling yourself in an interview are key skills most people forget to work on and kind of just wing it. That's unfortunate because the third unspoken truth is this. Getting into the Ivy League is 50% a marketing exercise. Simply put, if you don't get the marketing right, your talents won't get recognized. But guess what? That's completely okay because it's actually the substance that matters in the end, not the shiny badge Harvard pins on you during graduation. All of this substance is encapsulated in what I like to call the seed. If you have the seed, this latent potential inside of you, it actually really doesn't matter whether or not Harvard or Yale recognizes it or not. That potential, with or without a golden ticket of acceptance from Harvard, is yours. No one can take that away from you. If you are going to be the next Michael Jordan, you will become the next Michael Jordan, regardless of whether or not the Ivy League recognizes it. Michael Jordan doesn't need the Ivy League. The Ivy League needs Michael Jordan. You, in actuality, have all the power. In fact, the Ivy League is scared that it will miss out on a branding opportunity to call you one of their own. They look through hundreds of thousands of applicants hungrily searching for this golden nugget because they do not want to miss out on capitalizing on your eventual success. Harvard has been able to claim eight US presidents, 188 surviving billionaires, 79 Nobel laureates, 10 Academy Award winners, 48 Pulitzer Prize winners, and 108 Olympic medals. Imagine if Harvard had missed out on all these candidates. I'm sure each one of them would still have been wildly successful without Harvard. Harvard, on the other hand, sapped of its lifeblood 
would not have been. Economists Alan Kruger at Princeton University and Stacey Dale at Mathematical Policy Research found in a prominent research study that students who were accepted into elite schools but actually decided to go to a less selective institution earned salaries just as high as their Ivy League counterparts. In another study, they found that these students didn't even need to be accepted by the Ivy League for this relationship to hold. The mere fact that a student even applied to an elite institution seemed to be a powerful enough indicator that signified his or her ability to succeed. It appears that student ambition, as reflected in the quality of the school to which he or she applies, is a better predictor of earning success than what college they ultimately choose or which college chooses them. They call this the Steven Spielberg effect. Spielberg was rejected by both USC and UCLA film schools. So what did he do? He enrolled in a much less prestigious program and still made it happen. In other words, not getting into the Ivy League is not a big deal. Concentrate on the substance of you and grow your potential. If you truly adopt this mindset, having or not having the Ivy League badge of success will not matter at all. I promise you that. But if you are still indeed interested in the Ivy League merit badge of approval, stay tuned for the next video in which we dive deeply into exactly what you need to do to maximize your chances of getting seen. This is a part one of a series in which we examine the dusty dark secrets of the Ivy League. If you enjoyed this video, let me know. Subscribe, comment, go tell your friend, your grandma, and your pet hamster. As another plug, I'll be releasing the next parts on Substack first, so if you want early access to this, be sure to become a paid member there. Link in the description. Okay, smell you later. And once again, wanted to shout out to all my Super Thanks fans. You guys are awesome. And I am super appreciative of everything, your comments, your donations. Want to give you guys a shout out. ParinWell32, Hola Kristen7209, DanBX3SW, two donations, thank you. Naptalia Gabolahan2568, hope I'm pronouncing your username correctly. And last but not least, I want to give a special shout out to Ian Henman Official with a donation of $100. I was floored and astounded. You'll be getting your official Ian Henman Official stick character doodle and you'll be featured in one of my next videos. So look out for that. Thanks again, everyone.